Did you make any short films before you made your first feature? Is it Wild and Blue? Yeah, I made a couple short films. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Now, were these ones where you actually had a crew, or were these just more just on your own with some friends, or like the short film level? Um, you know, one was, they were all pretty indie. I mean, like, one was like just me and a camera and a couple of actors. Um, one was like some of my buddies from college students, like, just the closest, you know, it was a crew, it was a college crew. Um, so those are a couple short films that I made. Nothing like big or expansive, but just little fun, little shorts. And with Wild and Blue, did you plan to make it a feature or were you gonna have it as a short and then it just evolved? No, I, uh, I planned to make it as a feature the whole, you know, the whole time. Oh. Yeah, it was written as a feature, got directed as a feature, came out as a feature. What's it about? <laughs> uh, Wild and Blues, you know, it's about a lot of things. Um, but it's, um, it's kind of this psychological thrill. It's about a guy who's uh, a serial killer who's making his own movie. That's kind of the log line. But it's about a lot more than that. It's about, like, the reality of cinema, the reality about playing a part, what the camera does to people, how you see through a camera the influence of movies onto people, how this guy's been influenced by movies. So it's really about cinema, um, kind of told through the serial killer's point of view. It's kind of like influenced by Man Bites Dog and some Michael Haneke films along the way. So that's Wild and Blue. And um, how many shooting days was it? Wild and Blue was 16 shooting days, hmm. yeah. So how was that for you to go from making two shorts to now you're making this very, it sounds like a very complicated story. It's, it's not like a simple, that sounds no. like a very complex. It was, yeah. Um, it was fun. I mean, it, you know, it kind of just, um, it moved really fast. Like, you know, I wrote a script. I, I met a guy, his name was Felix. He wanted to make a movie. Um, we buddied up. We kind of, you know, I wrote the script. We worked on it. Next thing I knew, I was on set. Wow. And, um, it was there, you know, you just like suddenly you're there making a movie. Um, Cause we just were like, hey, we don't have a lot of money. We don't really, we're just gonna put it together and we're gonna, here's a date and then we're just gonna do everything we can to make the movie by this date. And, you know, luckily all the pieces aligned along the way. I mean, a lot of things fell apart, but you know, everything wound up that date happened and we were making the movie. You know, we had a red, we had a sound guy, you had the actors, you're making a movie. So that's kind of all you need at a point. You got a DP, you got a camera, you got lights, you got actors, you got a script. Great. Shoot it. That's kind of what happened. So you didn't overthink it and it wasn't where you had to make it perfect? I mean, I haven't no, seen No, no, I like, overthought oh, it. Oh, I had to make it, it perfect for <laughs> sure because that was my first film. And, you know, I think you overthink and try to make everything perfect whenever you're making a movie. But like that... That was um, that was a fun experience because it was my first movie um, that I obviously ever directed, first real film. And then when it when it was done, did you say I want to do this again, or did you need you were like, well, that was terrifying. It actually came through. Should I do this again? Like, what was that experience like once it was finished? It was a little bit of both. You know, you're kind of like, you know, you. you you're left with, oh, wait, did I enjoy every moment the way I should have enjoyed it? Did I write the best script that I could have? Oh, I did all these things wrong. Oh, I did this thing right. Oh, I can't believe I've done it. Oh my God, I waited my whole life to do that and it happened and now it's done. It might not ever happen again. You know, oh my God. I, so you're, it's, kind, it's a lot of like, what did I just do? And it's over now. Um, and then you watch it and you're kind of like, Wow, I made that. So that's this gratifying experience. So as soon as I wrapped Wild and Blue, I mean, I just jumped into editing it because I cut it myself. I like cutting all my movies. Um, Why? Is it, well, is that aside from saving money and, and having more... No, time? actually, it's nothing to do with saving money. I, I just, I came from editing. It's where I kind of, I learned some of my best tools. Um, I love editing. I like other people's eyes on my work, but I, I like being intimate with it. Um, so I trust myself in the editing room. That's really it. And uh, it's kind of like writing. 
you know, Godard says you make a movie three times, you write it, you shoot it, and you edit it. That's how many times you write a movie. So it's just like writing. So the same way you treat writing a screenplay, you stay up all night, you figure out what you want to write, and you just keep typing the words out until it makes sense. Same thing with editing is you just sit there over and over and you keep cutting and you undo and you throw it away and you retart the scene and you cut again and that doesn't work and you keep going and you keep going and you get the rhythm and you get the vibe and you figure it out. Um, so it's just as intimate as writing is and sometimes the post-production process gets overlooked that way. But I think it's a really intimate side of filmmaking and I plan on always editing my movies. Um, I love doing that. Do you ever get into the editing bay or in, in your office in front of your computer and go, I didn't get the shots I wanted and have that like terrifying moment? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not, it, you, you're kind of always like, eh, I wish, I kind of wish I did this a little differently. It's not always about the shots. You're kind of like, oh, that would have been nice. You know, I'm pretty good with when I leave before I move on, knowing I got everything I wanted, but you're always kind of like, oh, well, this would have been a good idea, you know? Sure. You're kind of like, oh, same way, like, like, oh, I wish I had that line of dialogue. But then you're in post, so you can always ADR stuff and have fun and play around with it. And you got to watch the scene every way you can. You got to cut it backwards, forwards. I watch every scene, silent, no music, no sound, everything, just because you got to see the way the scene plays out. Um, so you kind of, you kind of left it sometimes. You're like, I, I do wish I had this one little piece of dialogue or I had this one shot or it just happens. And just being okay with that and say, well, we're going to keep going because yeah, I mean, you're going to be as okay with it as you can because that's what you've got. Your new script is your footage. Wow. So you got to live with it. So with the film Wild and Blue, did you get distribution for it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you did, okay. So you went the full, like you took it through the entire process. Did you have a screening too? We, uh, we did have a screening. We screened in Madrid Film Festival, um, which went really well. Uh, and I won Best Director, and my yeah. actor won Best Actor. We went to a couple other film festivals, and yeah, it, it was it was good. It uh, went, you know, got distributed in Germany and a bunch of countries, and you know, it's on iTunes and Amazon. So very cool. Yeah, you learn a lot. You really learn a lot because, like, um, you know, I learned a lot by doing, which you're kind of like at the end of the day, you're like, oh, I don't know if I. Should have learned by doing it. She thought about this as I went along, you know, but sometimes it's not always the case. We just made the movie, got it out there, got as much press as we could. We luckily had, we, we did this crazy stunt. We got on the cover of Movie Maker magazine. Um, How'd you do that? That's really cool. We uh, made a fake offer on a billboard and told them that we were going to offer them 50 grand because, and we kept sending them like images that they weren't going to like until they, said no so we then spun it around and said our movie was getting censored in los angeles and and it got all this press it was on like tmz and all this stuff so it was, it was like a funny little prank it just wanted press so i created this like big argument with a poster company um fake news before fake news was a thing yeah right? exactly mm -hmm. well, i mean it was real news they really did reject me and they didn't want me to but i didn't really have the money to make the offer on the billboard but the plan was to get them to say, no, we won't use your poster anyway, so. So was it offensive, the poster? Well, it was a little offensive. A little offensive, yeah. yeah. Interesting. What year was this? I think it was like, I think it was like 2016. Oh, that recent, okay. Yeah, 2016, 2015, 2015 maybe. Wow. Yeah. That's quite an experience for a first feature. That, that's quite a ride. Yeah, it got it got some good press. It was um, it got out there. You know, I love the movie. It's it's totally offbeat and weird. And we scored a whole punk album to it. And like, you know, I had a buddy and he wrote great music. And we said, look, I, I said I, I'm always I wrote the song listening to the Cramps and the Damned. 
So I said, let's just write a punk album and just put it to the movie. I've never heard like, I just want a full punk soundtrack and put it in the film and it worked and it was so cool. And we just did a lot of, we had a lot of fun making that movie.